Hello people, this is Pulse Beetle. This is gonna be my review of surviving the aftermath. Right, um something I'll let you know beforehand. I have been waiting for this game for years because it was free on Epic a couple of years back and I missed it. They've now brought it back this week, free on Epic. Get this game. I like survival games, I love them. And this one looks really cool. It's got some cool mechanics. I had a quick go on it, uh, but I died because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Because I've gone out of my way not to watch videos so that I can have a rough idea how it works. Now, I recorded this in OBS Studio to try and make the sound of my videos sound a bit better. Um, unfortunately, for some reason, there's something wrong with the, my options and it chopped the video up into loads of little segments. So I'm going to try and weave them together, but it's not going to be as good as it could have been. Hopefully, I've got that sorted. I'm going to test that on some other videos. I will probably do a let's play on this game because like I said, I've waited for like a couple of years. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, but I'll probably play it for the next month or so on when I'm not making videos because I give myself a couple of hours in the evening to have a go on uh, different games. Enjoy the video. Thank you for your time. Surviving the Aftermath is a strategy simulation game where players build and manage a colony of survivors after a world ending event. We don't know what the event is, but I blame Russia. The game features over 130 buildings, over 80 unique specialists, and a periodically generated world map to explore and scavenge. Yeah, it does change every time you play it, excluding your own base. So I've played uh, the first one I played had no water, um, no water basins at all. So I couldn't fish, and I couldn't build a little uh, water outpost, and we all died. Game's fault, not my fault, or my building management. Now, um, the reason why I was also a bit hesitant to purchase the game is because this is made by Paradox. Paradox have a habit of pumping out DLCs for any games that are successful. Tons of DLC. It's one of the problems with the company. However, the DLC they do put out tends to be pretty good. I don't know about this one. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I would definitely be doing a oh, let's play of this one. Um, in this game, you can come across like bandits, cultists, and other communities. Uh, you can trade with them. Stuff like the usual um, stuff you find in these kind of games. This is a good game. It's free. Go get it. It's, just, it's a no-brainer. Um, if it's really, really good and I really, really like it, I might actually buy it on Steam just so I can get the Steam Workshop on the game. Uh, the fact that they don't have... F Epic haven't had anything like that in their store. I don't think they understand. That's why they don't sell as many games. If the, if you have a PC, you should be using mods in games. It just makes the games better. makes the games more fun. So, the only thing I'd say in this game, I don't know how you look at it. I look at it as a positive. Some people might look at it as a negative is the fact that it is hard the first few times your colonies will die not might will uh, because you need to find a groove on when to build how to build what to build uh, that's one of the learning curves of these games it always is a learning curve so die a few times but just have fun doing it i know i will um i've seen mutant bugs in this once i like seeing them i want to see more figure that out more little weird things to Attack my city. Other than that, uh, this is Pulse Beetle. Sign off. Have a good day. I would so far rate this game uh, seven hedgehogs out of six foxes. Keep the pulse and have a good one.